Aloha and welcome to the Bear Wozniak Adventure coming to you from Waikiki Beach. We've had a beautiful week here in Waikiki. In the summertime in Waikiki is a time when, when the beautiful uh, south swells come. Sometimes we'll get, we'll get waves that travel 2,000, 3,000, 4,000 miles from the southern hemi uh, storm. So uh, we've had a great week here in Waikiki and we're going to start off our week with you today having with us as our guest Teresa Mall, the author of a new book about uh, the woke culture. We'll be right back with more of the Bear Wozniak adventure. Welcome to the Bear Wozniak adventure. Kickstart that engine and roll thunder with the pack. Explore the grittiness of manly spirituality. Gain traction in the virtues. Zoop up your spiritual engine by turning adversity into adventure. Now here's Bear Wozniak. Let's ride. Aloha, welcome to the Bear Wozniak Adventure. You know, there's a, a story in uh, the Old Testament about Nehemiah. And Nehemiah was, uh, as you probably know, was the shortest prophet in the Bible. And uh, unless you're not a Bible scholar, maybe you don't know that. Nehemiah, sorry, you're going to have to deal with my, my uh, dad jokes right off the bat here. Uh, but in the story of Nehemiah, he came back to Jerusalem after the, the, after the, the people that had been put in exile for many, many years. And he found out that the, the walls of Jerusalem had been just left in disrepair, that there were breaches in the walls and there was um, everything had just been left to kind of go to rot. And as you know, if you don't take care of things, uh, entropy sets in. And so he challenged uh, the people there to rebuild the walls. And the way the wall was rebuilt is, if you read uh, the extended version of that chapter of that book, it talks about how this man and his family rebuilt the wall from this uh, from this part to this part. And then another man and his family rebuilt the wall from this section to this section. You can just see it as it goes around like a clock around the walls, that it was the domestic church that rebuilt those walls. And walls uh, fall down. Walls deteriorate. If you don't maintain the walls uh, in time, they're not going to be able to protect you. And I think that's what we've seen in our society. We have seen a great breach in the walls uh, it seems like the, in every in every um, almost every area of our life the woke culture has has invaded and uh, if you don't maintain and take care of the walls of protection that God has given you there is there's scripture verse about where we where um, I think it's in Psalms where we say Lord build a hedge of protection around me build a wall of protection around me we need to we as families uh, men and women that breach in the wall is running right through our living rooms. And so it's up to you as the domestic church to make sure that within your marriage and within your family that you're doing all that you can to make sure that there's structure there and that there's a, a, de, a, a dignity there uh, and, a re, and a reliance on, on, on God's word and the moral teaching of the Catholic Church and how you, uh, how you protect your family. So we have today with us Teresa, Teresa Mall. Uh, she's written a book called Woke Proof Your Life. Really, really a great, a great title. And I'm going to give you a little background, Hunter. Teresa, uh, I'm going to just read the, this introduction. Teresa Mole's writing has appeared in the New York Times, the Baltimore Sun, the Miami Herald, the New York Post, the American Conser Conservative, and Mad Magazine. I didn't know they published that anymore. No, well, just, I'm, I'm no, older just, than you think, yeah, maybe. Yeah. <laughs> no, not Mad Magazine, sorry. <laughs> Teresa is currently an assistant editor of the Spectator World, a policy advisor for the education at the Heartland Institute, and part-time editor of the Phillipsburg Journal, where her beloved Terrier Pitkin has a weekly advice column. That's so cool. Her <laughs> past pastimes include country drives, trap shooting, that's cool, outdoor exercise, and befriending offbeat characters, and hence that's why she's here with us on the Bear Wozniak Adventure, hopefully. We'll become friends if you like if you like offbeat people. So welcome to the show, Teresa Mall. Thank you. I think we're friends already. Yeah. <laughs> well, you've you've lived. Uh, you 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 went to college in Texas. Uh, you okay. lived in uh, Boise, you said, or, or no, uh, some uh, near T near the Grand Tetons in Idaho. Teton Valley, yes. Teton uh -huh. yep. Valley. L I love Idaho. We just love Idaho. Me too. It's uh, I think it's I make America's best kept secret. Idaho yes. and Kentucky. They're yeah. just, nobody lives there. I mean, that's changing that Californians yeah. are discovering it, but yeah. it's cold, it's remote, it's gorgeous. It has every kind of outdoor activity you could want. And 
don't tell anybody. It's really great. We don't want people to yeah. ruin it. Well, well, people, I think people listen to your show can go there. But yeah, I, I, I was there with the Boise uh, Salt and Light Radio last summer. I think it was Cindy and I went through there and um, and we did a, a rally for them, and we rode motorcycles up the Payette Valley. The Payette Valley. Uh, I said, hey, why don't we ride a few motorcycles? Get a few guys together. We'll ride motorcycles. Sixty guys showed up, wow. and so and I said, we'll just ride for a couple of hours. Eight hour. Uh, expedition is what it turned out to be, but I know you like um, you like uh, mountain biking. Uh, do you have you uh, mountain biked up there in the in the I- Idaho area? I have, yeah. Uh, during the winter time, you ski for about nine months out of the year, and then in the summertime, you go on those sea mountains on your mountain bikes. Yes. Well, you know the mount, mountain the summer times there can be good. It's always nice nice if the summer lands on a weekend, you know, so you can get out and enjoy it. But I know it can, it can be brutal and cold there. But you had an experience mountain biking. Uh, I, you know, when we were there, we we kept a log with every every single kind of animal that we wanted to see. But there was one animal we wanted to see from a distance, and that was a bear. Did you have an, an encounter with a bear while you were out mountain biking? I did, yes. I was uh, biking with a friend, and he was a little bit faster than I was. So he was biking along through the woods. We're having a beautiful time, smelling the perfumed pines, having just just a really great day, lost in the moment and the, and the thrill of it all. And then uh, he must have disturbed Mr. Bear, who was sleeping peacefully ahead of us, because by the time I got up to the point uh, where the bear was, he was lumbering off into the woods and I saw his body and his backside and he was he was a chubby guy and he was big. And so I started yelling to my friend, yelling his name and, you know, panicking, freaking out like, oh, my gosh, we have to get out of here. There's a bear. And another mountain biker was coming down the mountain the other direction and um, stopped. And I said, we just saw a bear. And he, he looked around and said, where is he? Sweet. <laughs> and just mm-hmm. kept riding. I was like, okay. Mm-hmm. Um, these adventurous types, you know, they're a little bit crazy. He was not disturbed at all. He actually wanted to see the bear. And we got out well, of there. Well, that, that's that naive. <laughs> that, frankly, that's naive. That's naive. Yeah. <laughs> I had a cabin up in near Glacier Park, uh, two miles from Canada, on the North Fork of the Flathead River. And uh, I didn't know I'd built my cabin on a grizzly corridor. Oh so I saw a regular grizzly sign, and we had some carpet rolled up on my on the front porch of my house, um, my little one room cabin <laughs> that I was going to roll in and put inside the um, the cabin later uh, that day, the next day. And uh, a mountain lion came and sprayed it. And once a mountain lion sprays it, it's kind of like done. And so yeah, so mountain so so the grizzly bears and the and the brown bears, the black bears up there, are very 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 dangerous. So um, you're fortunate. Uh, I've had, did, did you smell the bear? I know often the bears just smell terrible. I did not smell the bear. You no, must have but been I upwind did, from them. Yeah, I just read an encounter actually about a pair of college athletes, I believe they're in Wyoming, who mm. one of them was mauled by a bear and then his yeah. buddy, they're both wrestlers, came and basically fought the bear off. And that's what they said. They're like, the thing we can't get out of our head was the stench they just smelled so bad especially when you have its mouth like around your head you're gonna smell it that's gonna smell bad (laughs) yeah no i was i was i was um i'm gonna use this as a segue actually i was i was hunting in in montana uh with four other guys and uh, we 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 dropped off at different points along this fire road and we were going to sweep the valley up and kind of see if we could herd any elk or deer up towards um the fourth guy who was up up on this ridge and uh suddenly it got really cloudy and a light snow began to fall and there was it was probably a foot worth of snow where we were walking and i had my compass so no worries right because you you know you always orient uh by the mountaintops uh, but suddenly i couldn't see them they just settled right down on top of me and so i looked at my compass and i looked at my heading and i go oh no i hadn't done anything with the compass before um before that to test it i go oh this compass isn't isn't any good it's not accurate so as as i'm hiking along i um <clears throat> I just decided I would take the best course, and I knew if I worked my way up a certain uh, drainage, I'd eventually hopefully come to that 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 uh, fire trail where the other other guys and we were all supposed to meet up. And uh, um, the other guys actually encountered a grizzly bear. They, they could the, when a grizzly gets mad, it snaps its jaws. You know, you can hear it. And fortunately, that didn't happen to me. But what did happen to me is that I began to go on my own sense of what direction I should take. And I realized I'm just disoriented, and you know it's 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 days are days are short during the as it, in the in the hunting season, and it was getting cold and the snow was falling more. But luckily, I finally found a set of trail, another set, of, someone else's uh, 
footprints. So I said, I'll just follow these footprints, and I'm sure he knows where he's going, and I'll end up you know, coming out on some fire road somewhere. Uh, but after about 30 minutes of following that trail, I realized that it was my own trail. That had made a full circle back, oh, and I was my. walking on my own trail, and uh, I realized how important the compass is. And I think in our world today with your new book, uh, Woke Proof Your Life, that we've kind of lost direction, that we've kind of lost, that the whole whole society, and sometimes we get sucked into it too, are, don't have our, our true compass settings. And if you're off, you know, Cindy and I, we, we sail, if you set a compass heading that's off to, in the, out in the open ocean where there's islands, it's not like, oh, we're lost, let's just go back. If you're out in the open ocean and your compass heading is off just a couple of degrees, you're gonna miss the next island. So so how important a compass setting is, and that's why I think your book is so great. What, what inspired, we we need a we need we need a true heading. We need a true compass. We need to know where true north is. What inspired or what? Let's put it this way. What did it? Did this book chose cho, choose you or did you choose this book? What woke proof your life? I would say this book chose me. Um, I love that analogy you made to the compass. I actually use that analogy in the book. I say that our nation's moral compass has been haywire for quite some time, and we know what happens whenever our compass is going in all sorts of different directions in the wrong direction. So I just, uh, I feel, especially since COVID and even since my childhood, which wasn't that long ago, um, there's just been this growing sense of dissatisfaction in life and just we've lost our joy, I feel like, our patriotism, the um, the things that used to bind us together as Americans. And um, I, f- I get this growing sense that whenever we look at one another in America, we don't see each other as fellow citizens, as patriots, as Christians, as traditional um, people anymore. We see each other as left and right, as did you get the vaccine? Did you not get the vaccine? Mm-hmm. Are you hanging a rainbow flag? Are you not? All these mm-hmm. things that are coming between us. And it's a really unpleasant way to live. And we see stress, anxiety, depression, obesity, addiction. All of these mm-hmm. things are just skyrocketing in our country. And I really wanted to get to the root cause of what what happened. Where did we go wrong? How did we get so far off track? Why do we see each other more as oh. enemies? Well, well, we, and, I got it. we got to take a hard break, but we'll, we'll get okay. right back. We're talking about... Woke Proof Your Life, the new book by Teresa Mall. We'll be right back to find out more of the Bear Wozniak adventure. Now you can journey with other men on the adventure of a lifetime, growing in manly virtue through Bear's Man Cave community in our three-year school of manliness. Join at deepadventure.com. Better yet, you can lead your own sons through the same compelling video, audio, and written content. Can you imagine how much deeper your relationship with your dad could have been and how much more you could have learned and pitfalls you might have avoided if your dad had a tool like this to help to draw you both into a deeper life-changing discussion? Now you have a trigger that you can pull that will take you into gritty discussions with other men and with your sons at deepadventure.com. Deep Adventure Ministries is grateful to Notre Dame Federal Credit Union for underwriting the Bear Wozniak Adventure on EWTN. Notre Dame Federal Credit Union provides car loans, mortgages, SBA loans, and depository accounts nationwide, as well as 24-hour support. Go to deepadventure.com to find their link or go to notredamefcu.com. Mahalo to Notre Dame Federal Credit Union for making the Bear Wozniak adventure possible. You can gain traction in the virtues in my book, Deep Adventure, The Way of Heroic Virtue. And you can be inspired by my personal testimony of heartache and triumph with my book, A Surfing Guide to the Soul, both newly published by Sophia and available at our web store, deepadventure.com and also on Amazon.com. This is a warning. The Bear Wozniak Adventure is dangerous. The radical change Bear challenges you to is not for wimps. Change this station now to a soft rock station before it's too late. You've been warned. Now, here is Bear Wozniak. All 
Aloha. Welcome to the Bear Wozniak Adventure. <clears throat> I'm going to invite everybody to go to our website, deepadventure.com. Uh, my new book, Where Have All the Cowboys Gone? It's basic, It's called The 12 Rules of Manliness, Where Have All the Cowboys Gone? You can go there to pre-order it and order my other books, Deep Adventure, The Way of Heroic Virtue, as well as A Surfer's Guide to the Soul. Uh, uh, so we invite you to go to our website, deepadventure.com. And you can also join Bear's uh, Man Cave in the School of Manliness there. It's it's a three-year curriculum on manliness that you can go through with us if you're part of the Man Cave. We get together. It's a non-Facebook community that's on our website. We talk story with each other through the day and also uh, get together once a month on Zoom meetups. And then we, we go through the curriculum together. And you as fathers can lead your sons through that curriculum. And I would also say mothers can do the same. If you're a single mom, it's a great place to introduce your confirmation age or older son to the principles of manliness. Uh, so we invite you to go to deepadventure.com and check it out. We have with us today our guest, Teresa Moll, and she's written a book, Woke Proof Your Life. And she was saying earlier that she didn't choose to write this book. It was almost like she was compelled to write this book. So, so uh, t- tell us, um, what, what do you mean by woke proof your life? Well, as I was saying, there, I just sensed that there was a growing uh, alienation and division and misery in our country, and I wanted to get to the, the root cause of that. And what I see in our world today is the, um, the prevalent, I would say, evil of our day. Of course, evil has always, always existed. It always will exist in our fallen world. But the name, I guess, the smokescreen sort of that <laughs> evil is given um, in our day is wokeness, um, and it disguises a lot of evil uh, tactics and schemes. So to woke proof your life, I liken it to, um, you know, if something is proof, like if something's waterproof, you, mm. it's not that you're you're hiding from the woke world, you are still living in the world, you're in the world, but not of the world, but you're putting on kind of like, a really nice Gore-Tex raincoat and an amazing waterproof hat and some cool welly boots and an awesome umbrella. And you're going out into the world and you're being a part of it, but you're not being affected by it because you are proofed. You have proofed yourself with virtue, with wisdom, with an interior peace and a relationship with God and all of these things that are strengthening you so that whenever wokeness comes at you, it's not penetrating you. It's not penetrating your soul. It's not agitating you. You mm. can experience it, um, be a part of the world and as much as, as is good for you or as much as you can contribute to the world. But I see people that I'm close to, uh, conservative Christians, Catholics, who get so agitated by the woke stuff, and I get it. I It's annoying, it's evil, it's bad, um, but we are told time and time again in scripture not to be rattled by things, to put our trust in God and uh, that he will take care of us and not to worry about tomorrow. So I just wanna remind people that it is evil, it's awful, and we have a right to be righteously angry, but we can't become so flustered that we lose a sense of of peace and joy within ourselves and I lose our ability to do our duty. You know, um, so we get so upset that and we're so busy um, <laughs> battling with people on Instagram or whatever it is, or going to school board meetings and screaming at school district superintendents that we forget to read our children a bedtime story, or we forget to invite our, uh, or we don't have time to invite our neighbor over for dinner and just hang out with them and chat with them as as a fellow human being and a fellow um, soldier of Christ. So that's what Woke Proof is all about. It's about putting on this mantle of, <laughs> of virtue and bravery and trust and peace and um, and cultivating a community of people who are also woke proof. Right, so it's not that we're not going to uh, enter into the battle. Um, for example, if you're going to go to a, if you're going to go to, a, I always encourage people to become a member of the school board, go attend your school board, but um, but to do that, uh, I, lo- I love the way St. Peter said to give people a reason for our hope. You need to do that as a reasonable and reason, uh, a person with reason, and sitting watching the news at night and yelling at the TV isn't doing anything. And there's also a scripture verse that St. Paul said, whatever is, I can't quote it exactly, but everyone knows it. Whatever is good, whatever is righteous, whatever is truth, whatever is peaceful, whatever, whatever is a good report, think on these things. And so many get, people get so caught up in, <clears throat> in just the atrociousness of the woke culture that they've won the battle. They've stirred you up. Your focus is no longer on Jesus. Uh, it's on it's on 
look at that or look at this and, and looking at all of the problems. I've heard people say, well, you know, you need to know about the woke culture. You need to know who the enemy is. You need to know all these things um, uh, because you need to know the truth and the truth will set you free. Well, truth is, is that that's not the kind of truth that that scripture verse is talking about. And Jesus said, I'm the way, the truth and the life. Truth is actually boils down to it. It's a person. And so to let this, the, this, all this stuff get you all stirred up and you lose your peace, it, it's, it's, it's not, it, it means you've lost the battle. We need, to, we exactly. need to keep our eyes on Jesus. Yeah, I totally agree. And I have friends who are, uh, have the same values that I do and the same outlook on all the woke stuff, but they will spend hours and hours a day reading this stuff, watching every news thing, getting mad about it, sending me articles, all this stuff. I'm like, I get it. I know that you're upset and I know that you want to fight against it, but it's almost a disservice to God to spend that much time because even Jesus said, you know, he tells us to shake the dust from our feet whenever basically debating with these people was not Mm -hmm. fruitful. And you need to ask the Holy Spirit for discernment and wisdom to know when debating someone and trying to convince them is worthwhile and when it's not. And some of these people, the woke puppet masters, they don't care about the truth. They're not searching for it. And even Mm -hmm. if they were, or even when they're presented with it, they're going to reject it outright because it doesn't fit their narrative. It doesn't gain them earthly um, pleasures or money or prestige or whatever it is they're after. So there's not really any point. So Um, But to become so wrapped up in it is a disservice. Um, You know, if you're ignoring a beautiful summer day, you're ignoring um, the talents that God has given you for playing a musical instrument or whatever it is, because you're too invested in all of the distractions that the the woke evil people are sending your way, then they're winning. That's just because you don't adopt their principles doesn't mean that they haven't, you know, won a battle within your soul. So, uh, yeah, we need to be really, really cognizant That's, of how we're spending our time because it's a gift. It's like a, a child having a temper tantrum. All of a sudden, all the focus comes to them, you know, and it says you should just say, go to your room. Exactly, you know, yeah. I, and I say, yeah, in the book, I don't know if you remember this uh, cartoon, of Looney Tunes. Um, my favorite cartoons. A, of course, yes. Well, they're not they're they're not woke, so we can't yeah. watch those anymore. But um, for those who remember, there was a cartoon that I, I distinctly remember from when I was a kid. Of there's two Looney Tune characters fighting, and I think it's Bugs Bunny is in the middle of this scrap. You know, they have like the big dust ball and the classic Looney Tunes little yeah, fight right, scene right, with right. like you see legs exclamation and points and stuff. Yeah. yeah, exactly. And then somebody sticks his long thin leg out and just tiptoes away from the fight yeah and the yeah, other yeah. character is fighting with himself and he yeah. just continues fighting and fighting fighting and they don't even notice that the guy they were fighting left so that's kind of the analogy i give in world cooking also i'm like you can step away from it if you ignore them that's sometimes that's the best thing you can do because if they don't have anybody to call names to mm-hmm. label a bigot to say you're racist to do all these things to you know they need it takes two people to fight and if we just kind of turn away and say hey well you can call me a racist or white supremacist or whatever it is i'm gonna go love my family and serve my neighbor and uh build up my church community and have have a relationship with god then you you're beating them (laughs) that's wonderful you know so so we have to um have this conversation when we come back we're going to talk about then what does that mean it's not like we're it's not like we're stepping out of the fight we're just we're just fighting effectively you know uh you know in the I've, I've, i'm trained as a ninja black belt and one of the things that we one of the five realms that we fight in is a is a realm called um the wind mode and that's where we let the, our enemies we use our enemies energy against them they basically defeat themselves and so that's basically i think that's a, a good rule of thumb for us is is um you know, if you look back to the French Revolution, if you look back even to the days of, of, of Haman in the Old Testament, eventually in, in the French Revolution, which was a very anti-Catholic uh, uh, uprising, um, they basically, those people that uprose and, and were so woke at that time, ended up hanging on the gallows they, they had prepared for other people, just like Haman and his 10 sons did. And so it's, there's a way in which the properly, and we want to be strategic about this, that they let, let, it's almost like they defeat, let them defeat themselves. And let's, we want to fight, but we want to fight effectively. And God's ways are just so different than what, what our ways are. We're talking with Teresa Mall, her new book, Woke Proof Your Life. We'll be right back with more of the Bear Wozniak Adventure.
This is Daniel the Boone Markham with another episode of Country Up Integrity. As a lad, I could not figure out why my friends could do serious wrong and never have their conscience bothered. Me, I did plenty wrong as a teenager, and yet my conscience hammered me to no end. Later understood it was partly due to my Catholic upbringing, which gave me a clear sense of right and wrong. The law did what the Apostle Paul said it was supposed to do. We read in the Amplified Bible, The law has become our tutor and our disciplinarian to guide us to Christ so that we may be justified, that is, declared free of the guilt of sin and its penalty and placed in right standing with God by faith. End of quote. After coming to the Lord, my conscience got a might more powerful, would give me a serious butt kick until I went to the cross and got things right with the Lord and then go to any person I wrong to make it right again. Continually praying, reading, reading and preaching the Bible made the butt kickings more intense and frequent. Yet the release at the cross made it into something beautiful. Still have to go there during there every day. When I was an elected official, the temptation to compromise was unrelenting. Many politicians, even Christian ones, get tutored more by the world than the word to where lying muddy in the water and leaving out the truth is just a way of doing business. Had to get out of politics, it vexed my soul. The legendary cowboy comedian Will Rogers said, quote, if you ever injected truth into politics, you'd have no politics, end of quote. Got that right, Will. Well, this is Daniel the Boone Markham at countryup.org on a journey a few miles this side of heaven. We invite our mama bears to join with us at deepadventure.com. You'll have access to all of the Long Ride Home TV shows even before they air on EWTN. Plus, three years of the shareable Ocean Sunrise daily catechism videos. Plus, at deepadventure.com, a 20% discount at our online store with all of our great t-shirts and clothes and books and rosaries and medals and all kinds of accessories. You'll also get an autographed copy of Bear's latest book, and for a limited time, a Catholic biker stuffed teddy bear. All at deepadventure.com. Come on, Mama Bears, let's hear you roar. Be the kind of man that when he gets out of bed in the morning, the devil says, oh no, he's up. Go to deepadventure.com and invite Bear to speak. Aloha, welcome to the Bear Wasnick Adventure. We have with us as our guest today, Teresa Moll, her new book, Woke Proof Your Life. Uh, you know, the, 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 the biggest thing about the cancel culture uh, and the whole woke culture and the social justice warriors is that they take offense at so many different things. It's almost like there's certain people in my life I have to kind of, when I see them again, I have to kind of tiptoe around to find out now what are they going to take offense at this time, you know? Uh, what do I have to be careful about this time with that when I when I'm with them and uh, but the Bible says this it says I think it was st. Paul said it love does not take offense you know and the whole the whole the whole basis uh, for the whole world culture is taking offense and uh, and so we have with us today Teresa Mull Teresa then what shall what should we do how do we how do we woke proof our life how do we live a life um, how do we live that that Christian life? Well, at the same time, uh, tackling, I, mean, I guess, living the Christian life is how you tackle the woke. Living the life that God that God intends for you is the best way to to uh, to fight the, fight the woke culture. Is that what you're saying? Right. Yeah. So I advise people to not put them to limit the number of ways that they can be a target of wokeness as much as possible. So if that means um, homeschooling your children, starting your own school, doing what you can to send them to a Catholic school or to somewhere alternative just to get out of the way of wokeness because mm -hmm. it is evil and it is a poison. So um, doing things like that, limiting your technology, because I write in the book that wokeness lives and dies online. I think mm, that's wow. pretty accurate. <laughs> yeah, because if you think about it, of course, 
woke tenants, um, diversity, equity, inclusion, those things have been simmering. They've been part of um, our culture. Obviously, the LGBT movement has been around for many years, but it really took hold around COVID and exploded. And that's when everybody was stuck at home on their phones, uh, basically mm. absorbing all of the propaganda. Mm. Um, so, and that's actually also when a huge spike in uh, screen addiction started too. So mm. I think that was kind of set the set the perfect stage for wokeness to take hold. And then of course we've seen it explode with reckless abandon now. So limit your phone, um, limit the amount of media that you absorb, you know, don't just have the radio or the TV on in the background at all times, because I liken it to, um, to like spiritual and mental junk food you know people mm. think a lot of people think a lot about what they ingest um you know what you put in mm -hmm. your body what you consume and you you're aware of the effects it has on you but we don't do that so much with what we're seeing and what we're hearing and that's that's a really big deal so people need to safeguard themselves from these forces and then if you're spending time in the real world what i've experienced especially if you take yourself to places that are calmer, that are not the crazy fanatical, you know, downtown San Francisco's of the world or whatever. But most places in America are still pretty normal. They're still pretty calm and they're traditional um, good places to be there. They're, they will nurture your soul. So if you stay away from the phone and uh, you go outside, most people are not yelling at you, calling you a bigot, especially to your face, because most woke people are pretty cowardly. So you're not going to encounter that if you actually go out mm. and spend time with another person. If you have these these face-to-face uh, -face encounters, interactions, and then you really safeguard um, the what you're exposing yourself to, I advise people to use technology as uh, resource, not a recourse. You know, I think we've all mm. been there. We have five minutes to spare in the in the waiting room or in the in the line at the post office or whatever, and we we whip out our phone. And you know, how much wokeness pervades our life through these through these uh, distractions. Um, so just be really really cognizant of what you're doing with your time. Um, make sure that you are you are using it wisely. That you're not allowing woke forces to distract you from your duty and from your relationship with God. Uh, spend a lot of time in nature and counter all the beauty. It's basically like God made us this beautiful masterpiece, the <laughs> the beauty of the trees, of the birds, of the smells, the sounds, all these things. And people in America, North America, spend 90 per the average person spends 90 percent of their time indoors um and i think that's a huge problem too because of course yeah. wokeness is going to be there you don't find wokeness in the woods um whenever you're mountain biking and with the bears <laughs> you, might you know find a bear, so. but yeah. that's <laughs> exactly, a real and by, that's so. a real danger there but <laughs> yeah exactly real life dangers um so these are some of the tips that i give people just to to be in the real world more and to interact with one another because i don't think this anger exists really it's pretty artificial mm -hmm. i call it also um unforced stress we talk about mm. in tennis unforced errors you know that's right whenever the player doesn't actually do anything and they just mess up themselves and we have all this unforced stress that we're bringing upon ourselves you know everyone says they're so busy these days and i'm like how are we busier in a day that everything's automatic you can yes. order something on amazon get it in one day and i'm like yeah are you busy or are you distracted so i think people really wow. should analyze yeah how they spend their time um look at what they're doing is it productive does it bring peace does it make them a better person does it enhance their life and cut out all of the the junk food spiritual mental and physical that uh that they're wasting their time on and and wokeness will shrivel up and die that's wonderful that's a great way if you don't feed it it's going to die mm -hmm. and, you exactly. know I, it's so interesting because i say this uh in the man cave and to my children go outside <laughs> go outside and just be, you know, I know like when I fly into New York, the first place I go is Central Park. <laughs> I just want to make sure, okay, there's real ground here and I can touch it, you know. And, uh, and here in Hawaii, um, there, you know, people will, one of the things um, people will say is, oh, after you've worked a long, hard day, is you need to go out and look at the horizon. Learn to let your vision go beyond the TV screen or the walls of your house or the building next, next door go outside like for me the horizon is seven miles away or eight miles away from the beach you can see the kind of curvature of the earth out there and look at the horizon 
And I think that, that, that's a real good picture of what hope is. Hope looks to the horizon. I remember in Pirates of the Caribbean when, the, when Johnny Depp said, I think in one of the movies he said, now bring me that horizon. And I think that's a, that, that's a picture of hope. And so, so to go outside and to just, just to have a different, a different vision and a diff- it really does bring clarity. And I, and I love what you're saying about not, um, not um, you win by living, by living your life. But there is a time to engage. How can we, how, you know, we, in your, your titles of your book, Are You Fed Up Yet? What's at stake? Uh, how do we, how do we, um, we're not talking about we're not talking about putting our head in the sand. Um, we're talking about living the, the, the Christian life that God intended for us. But how do we, when there's a time to confront confront? What do, I mean, like you talk about in your book, you talk about the different corporations, and you even have a list of which ones have gone woke and which ones aren't. How, <laughs> how can we do battle other than within just other than living our life and really uh, living it the way God intended? How can we how can we enter? How can we? you know, fight the good fight, so to speak. I have a whole section on how to make your voice heard and to stand up for your beliefs. You know, there's lots of statistics, polls out there that show that uh, traditional minded Americans are the majority, you know, for all of the wokeness that we see. It's because these corporations are rich and powerful and they do have a huge platform, but they're actually the minority. Most Americans don't want politics and they don't want all this wokeness mixed into their sporting events or into, you know, every time you go to the hardware store or the grocery store, they don't want all this stuff. We, so, we say, we, I used to, we used to just call it, I hate to be so blunt, but we used to call it like that, 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 that advertising or that, or that human resource arm. We used to tell them the good looking, know nothing master's degrees people. That's where they go, you know, exactly. and they're bringing that. That's where the, that's the gateway. That's the culture is that kind of thing. And, and we, we don't, uh, you know, the average American, like if we want to have a beer, we want to just have a beer. We don't want to talk about politics. It doesn't need mm-hmm. to put, it doesn't need to be in our face. So then how do we battle that? Right. Um, it used to be rude to talk about politics and religion. And now if you don't advertise it on your billboard, then you're a bigot or whatever. Yeah, that's wow. to me. How far have we become? Yeah. So there's many different ways that you can boycott. Um, obviously, what's happened with Bud Light and Target, um, it's been very effective. Those that's sending a huge message. Bud Light, as you've noticed, has not stood up and said, we are pro-trans and we're backing Dylan Mulvaney. They kind of like ran back with their well, tails they, between they, their legs. But they did this last weekend at the Pride Parade. They they they, they uh, supported a Pride Parade where there were naked guys running around during the parade. Oh, so okay. I don't think they've learned their lesson quite yet. But, <laughs> but yeah, but, well, but, the, but yeah. There's a, the voice is heard. Mm-hmm. Yeah, so being a conscientious consumer i call it being aware of uh what what companies corporations products are the most egregiously woke and the ones that are actively um, pushing an agenda that Mm. is counter to yours um keeping track of those you know you can drive yourself crazy it's kind of like whack-a-mole trying to keep track of them all but do your best Mm -hmm. um we gotta take it we gotta we gotta take a break (laughs) we're talking with Teresa mall her new book uh, woke proof your life. We'll talk. We're going to come back and have her share with us more of her strategies. The Bear Wozniak adventure. People love our EWTN TV show, Long Ride Home with Bear Wozniak. Thanks to you, the show has won four different tally awards. And now, instead of waiting each week for the next episode to air, you can actually binge watch our show and even share it with your friends when you go to deepadventure.com and join the mama bears or the man cave. Along with all the other benefits, you get total access to all the seasons of our aired episodes, plus instant access to episodes that won't even air for several months. Long Ride Home with Bear Wozniak, a great way to communicate the gospel in a gritty enough way that even tough men will stop and watch at deepadventure.com. Deep Adventure Ministries is grateful to Notre Dame Federal Credit Union for underwriting the Bear Wozniak Adventure on EWTN. Notre Dame Federal Credit Union provides car loans, mortgages, SBA loans, and depository accounts nationwide, as well as 24-hour support. Go to deepadventure.com to find their link or go to notredamefcu.com. 
Mahalo to Notre Dame Federal Credit Union for making the Bear Wozniak adventure possible. Are you still listening? I thought we warned you to change to an easy listening station. Well, you asked for it. Here is more of the Bear Wozniak adventure. Aloha, welcome to the Bear Wozniak Adventure. Hey, our new season of Long Ride Home, our motorcycle TV show, we're actually sending it to EWTN this week. So you should be looking uh, to EWTN to see when that is aired. You can also uh, get all, all episodes of all four seasons of Long Ride Home if you go to deepadventure.com and you become either a member of the Mama Bears, you become a member of the Man Cave. We send you links to all of those so that you can air them on your uh, Air them uh, on your TV or your c- computer and watch them with your family. Uh, also, we'd invite you to go to the Bear Wozniak Deep Adventure YouTube channel, and and, and uh, you can become a member there, actually, and uh, also subscribe to our channel. And you get the, this radio show goes out. To, you can watch the YouTube version of this radio show instead of just listening to it. We're talking with Teresa Mall and her book, Woke Proof Your Life. So how can – and you're sharing with us now strategies – to win this battle. And by the way, I think the pendulum, I think people have just about had enough of this. I think the pendulum is starting to swing. Do you sense that at all? I think so, definitely. Yeah, like I said, you know, people are exhausted from all the culture wars from, even if you do tend to be a little more liberal on the the social scale of things, you're just, you're sick of hearing about it. You don't want to talk about it. Like you said, you know, you just want to have a beer. You want to hang out. You don't want to talk about all this stuff. So I think that's really working to the, it's kind of backfiring on the woke agenda. You went too far, Um, which, which Satan always does. Yes, yeah. (laughs) He can't help himself. (laughs) Um, So, yeah, so, Boycotting, um, you know, being aware of of what companies to avoid. Um, Like I said, you can drive yourself a little bit crazy. And again, we want to keep our inner peace. And Jesus understands, you know, if we're doing our best, Um, if now and then we have to purchase something from a little company, I don't think he's going to damn us to hell. But, um, you know, doing our best. There's ways to Mm -hmm. micro boycott, you know, maybe start small, pick one or two things that you buy from uh, Walmart or Amazon and limit those. And then once you, you know, you work your way up, you start by doing something small. And then the next thing you know, you, you're building your resilience and really simplifying your life um, helps. I found that as I, uh, I've i been trying to woke proof my shopping habits, um, it can it can be difficult, but it's also kind of fun. It's like a fun challenge. It's, mm-hmm. it's hunting. Um, you mm-hmm. might have to spend a little more money, but you know, if you spend more on this thing, then you don't have it in your budget to buy this other thing, you find you don't need it. Um, and the more also you do the other woke proof activities that I advise, you know, getting a new hobby, joining a social club, volunteering at your church, all these things, um, going outside, just taking a walk doesn't cost anything. You find you don't need as much stuff. It's when you're spending 90 percent of your time inside on your phone that you're buying stuff. Oh, that you're I consuming really need that. Then. Yeah, I really need that. Yeah. No, you don't. And they're really good at that. Mm-hmm. And they convince you you need it. And um, you you find meaning and value and you get these little endorphins from buying stuff, which obviously fade right away. And then you have to buy more and more stuff. And it's, uh, that's how materialism is, is evil and wears away at us. But, um, yeah. So if you, if you put your value and your interests in things that are not material, that's an easy way to boycott. You just don't want or need as many things. Mm -hmm. So you're not funding the woke corporations. Mm -hmm. I also encourage people to educate themselves. Um, there's plenty of resources online, amazing, free, and really inexpensive resources. Um, because to be able to battle the woke masterminds, we have to be cunning. You know, the Bible tells us to be innocent as doves, but cunning also. So we need to uh, to build a foundation rooted in wisdom and truth. And I was blessed to have gone to the University of Dallas where I had a classical liberal arts education for which I am incredibly grateful, which really gave me, I think, um, a great outlook on life to be able to see how these trends work throughout history. Yeah, how, through, yeah be a you know, student nothing of ever history, changes. yeah. Right, yeah. So fortunately we live in an age, this is a, a case where technology could be a resource and not, not a recourse, you know, very useful. But we can, yeah, um, we can, you, we, you know, the liturgy of the hour. If you're, if you're mm-hmm. stuck in line someplace instead of going through the latest bad news, do that, do that hour's liturgy. You know, it's right exactly. on your iPhone, mm-hmm. right? 
Yeah. yeah. And um, I knock social media a lot because I think it brings about a lot of social ills and it's been proven that it makes people more depressed and things. But it's also a great place to interact with like minded Catholics to mm -hmm. um, find a community of, you know, maybe there's some homeschoolers and you find their Facebook group and you share resources or with them. There's or man tips. cave. There's man cave. Exactly. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. So, yeah. Um, I think for the most part, a lot of technology and social media stuff is negative, but you, if you're, uh, you know, mindful about it, to use a modern term, and um, and focused on how you employ it, of course, these can be amazing. It's got to be strategic. Things. It's like someone say, right. guns don't kill people, people kill people. And the same thing with mm -hmm. that, that smartphone. Uh, you know, I, I shouldn't, I probably shouldn't say this, but, you know, we have maybe 20,000 followers on Facebook, but mm -hmm. I never go there. We, we we use it as a distribution channel, but um, I really, every now and then something will pop up, like I'll get a reminder, a friend's birthday or something. But um, I just, I, I went I went and looked at Facebook for the first time in, in weeks, uh, a couple of days ago, and I was so glad I did. It was so cool to see all my friends, and they go, oh, I've lost touch with all these people, all 20,000 mm -hmm. of my friends, just kidding. <laughs> but, but you know, but, um, it doesn't have to be the first place you go. I think if you, and the other thing is you can, why not, why not in this day and age, instead of focusing so much on, on all the bad news and watching the TV and yelling at it at night, what Cindy and I do is we usually have our, our, our we, we take at least two, two nice walks a day, sometimes three. We usually go for a swim, you know, uh, in the ocean uh, for one or two of them. Yeah, we'll go out and surf and do all that stuff too, but our rhythm of in the morning going for a walk and going uh, and praying the liturgy, going for a swim. In the evening, we may do the same thing. And then we sit down at night on, the, on our beautiful, comfortable couches. And we're going to probably be entertained that night. But the first thing we do is we spend an hour of quiet time together. Mm -hmm. uh, right now, we're, 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 we're listening for 30 minutes to a, um, to a teaching, someone who's teaching going through the whole Bible. And, uh, and then we also may read, a, and, and then that's our time of doing um, a sacred reading, a relaxing and reading. We may put that first, and then we, we may find a good movie to watch or a long ride home TV show episode for you people out there, but, which is, by the way, is on Prime Video. But it's, it's established, um, virtue is, is a habit. And so you can, so the whole way to establish this woke proof life is to, is to decide up front, I'm gonna get up in the morning, I'm I'm gonna make a cup of coffee. I'm gonna put a peanut butter, a little jelly on a toasted biscuit. I'm gonna go down to the beach. And I'm gonna have my first half hour with the Lord. You mm -hmm. know, I'm gonna I'm gonna start out with prayer. I'm gonna start out there. And people call me and say, "At night, what are you doing?" Oh, I'm hanging out with some friends. Well, who? Saint Augustine. You know, reading reading the confessions. So one of the things people can do these days with this phone is why not go to? The, uh, I know I don't know if the university you went to has it, but I'm taking my online master's degree course from Steubenville. Or why not read Warren Carroll's seven volume set on the history of Christendom? Why not get educated? And right. and and like you said, in no and and in learning that type of thing, if you read the history of Christendom, you're going to be amazed at how the woke culture is basically co opted. Uh, so many of the principles of the gospel, but throwing out Jesus. And that's where yeah. it, all, it gets distorted when you do that. My church right next to me here, they say we are, we, we're, it's a Catholic church. It's where we go, go to mass, but it's kind of woke. And it mm. says, they'll say, we, we believe in gospel values. No, we believe in Jesus, you know? <laughs> and so when you, when you teach, when you go into the whole woke culture and you say, well, we're trying to you know, do justice and all that stuff, but you don't have the truth and you don't have love and you don't have Jesus at the center of it, it gets all chaotic. I got to give you a couple more minutes. Share it with us what you can. We're talking with Teresa Mall. Her book is Woke Proofing Your Life. Yeah, just going off of that, I would... Woke just, Proof Your Life, I mean. Yeah, Get just reiterate that to woke proof your life is to build an impenetrable fortress so that whenever the woke forces come against you, they don't make a dent, right? So you, Amen. you can go out in the I love world. It. Yeah, so it's kind of like, if you have the wisdom and knowledge of St. Augustine, of the Psalms, of the prophets, of the Lord, and people are throwing these insults at you, you're going to be like, whoa, yeah, St. St. Thomas Aquinas is right yeah. here in my brain. Like whatever nonsense you're saying to me is not going to affect me. Um, and it really gives you confidence and peace to go into this chaotic, wicked world because you basically you're looking at it from a bird's eye view, I feel like. And in writing this book um, and then going to, I try to go to daily mass as much as I can. And it seems like every day something in the scripture readings just pe like, 
sparks within me. I'm like, oh my gosh, that's like totally like a woke thing or that's it. I'm just like, oh, of course it is because there's nothing new under the sun. <laughs> and so every everything yes. you hear and everything you encounter, if you have the knowledge of these great thinkers, of these saints and um, of the, the evangelists, then really nothing's going to shock you. Nothing's going to rattle you. Nothing's going to scare you because they basically told us what to think, what to do, how to encounter all this stuff. Um, so you put on the armor and and we should be taking advantage of that. Instead of scrolling mindlessly through TikTok, we should be looking to these great wise thinkers who basically gave us a blueprint of how to live and follow them. Because Amen. It's I've got right behind me, you can see my library. And I, mm -hmm. I look behind you and I see all this library too. And I just think, yeah, you got to, you, you know, why not um, think as the Bible, as, as, as we said earlier, St. Paul said, think on these things. So think, do some thinking, do some, do some, do some study and, uh, and, uh, and, and, and meditate on God's Word. We're talking with Teresa Mull. I'm going to ask you a favor. Would you maybe write to me again in about a half a year? We'll have you back on the show. We don't usually have returning guests, but we'd love to talk. We'd like to see what the impact of this book is. It's just come out, Woke Proof Your Life. Would you do that for us? I would love that. It's actually not out yet. It's available for pre-order, but it'll be out um, August 15th. So um, oh, yeah. I would love to come back. I feel like we just scratch the surface and we could talk forever. So well, right, right. Maybe in about three or four months, we'll do it again. But you guys, you can go go in and pre-order this book because it's really. This is, here's what happens if you want to have an impact. If you go in, in for, for example, to Sophia, or if you go to Amazon and you if you pre-order this book on Amazon. Um, it helps it its visibility get ri risen. So when it if you pre-order and then the day it comes out, it like it pops and it, and all these books are delivered. Uh, it helps it helps uh, the book get promoted uh, on Amazon. So yeah, it's one thing that we can do. Give it some five star reviews and give it some five star uh, sure, reviews. Sure, Those Jeff Bezos would love to log on to his Amazon and see a book called Woke Proof Your Life at the very top. There that you go. Be, uh, there you go. Be very satisfying. <laughs> very good, Teresa. Thank you uh, for being with us. Until next next week. Uh, Teresa Mall, Woke Proof Your Life. Until next week, may the breath of the Holy Spirit aloha you. Aloha. Thanks for listening to the Bear Wozniak Adventure. Find more manly conversation at the Bear Wozniak Deep Adventure YouTube channel. Subscribe and ring the bell.